So now that we have our character and animation for the attack working, we need collision boxes now. So let's go and open uh, the blueprints, our main BP character uh, parent. And what I'm needing now is to create a hitbox so then this can interact with anything in front. So it could be an enemy or other characters. We're gonna go to what? I'm gonna search for box collision. I'm gonna name a hitbox because that's gonna be the M of it. While in here, I wanna be able to go to my right view. And I want this to be about the same space as the attack animation. So I'm gonna quickly go to my sprite and change this to attack so I can see how far it's going. And then I'm gonna move this a tiny bit and then scale it down a bit because it's too big at the moment. Let me just turn off my grid so I can control it a bit better. Right, something like that, okay? So this is now gonna allow me to hit things, but we just need to set it up first. Uh, and let me go back to perspective. And let's just ensure that my collision box or my hit box, like we called it, is the same width as my capsule, okay? I'm just gonna go lower it till it kind of fits within my capsule. Probably compile. I'm gonna go to my sprite again, and then it's gonna make it idle again. And then we're gonna save, compile and save, okay? Now that we have our hitbox, we need to tell our hitbox what it needs to do. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna tell it how it's going to interact with other things in the map or in the game. So at the moment, if we look at the collisions, collision presets, it's in all dynamics, so it's gonna interact with overlap with everything that's been checked. So I'm gonna change this to custom because I don't really care at the moment about everything else. All I care about is pawns, that's it. I'm gonna save it and compile it, okay? So the next thing I wanna do is go back to my content drawer. I'm gonna go to enemy, I'm gonna open enemy. In here, I'm gonna go and select my hitbox. I'm gonna go down all the way here where it says events. And in here, all I care about is this one, on component begin overlap. So I'm gonna click on that and you can tell it's gonna create a new event. Uh, I wanna be able to cast this into my main character. So, other actor, I'm gonna pull. and say right, use cast to PP character. All right, so we're gonna go back to our PP character and then we're gonna create a new function. So we're gonna click on function. I'm gonna name this one hit box underscore collision. All right, so what I wanna do here is I'm gonna get a branch. Remember, it's gonna compare true or false. And I wanna make the condition applied to the hitbox. So we are here now. Then I'm gonna require my hitbox. And from this hitbox here, all I did was drag it over. I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna search for set collision enabled. And I'm gonna duplicate it, control C and control V. And then in this one here, I want it to be able to query only, but non-physics collisions, okay? And this one will stay the same for the false. So we're gonna connect our hitbox to the target too. I'm gonna go true, and then I'm gonna go false, okay? And that's all you need to worry about for this part here. Now we need to start thinking about how it's gonna interact with the attack animation, right? So if we go into our content drawer again. Let's go into our blueprint. I'm gonna go into hero and I'm gonna open my AS hero character, which is my animation source, okay? I'm gonna look at my attack really quickly. So if you start proper looking at your animations, and if you think, right, at this stage, frame one, nothing, well, frame zero, nothing's happening. Frame one is not happening, nothing is just moving. And then you can see we only start attacking from three to four, yeah. So when you're attacking, you just wanna make sure that you don't pre-attack and you do damage when you're not actually moving. So we need to be able to code that into it. So if we right click on it really quickly, we're gonna like a notify state at the moment. It's not working because we've not created it, but it's just gonna tell it to play the animation from a certain frame. 
okay so we care about frame we could go frame two to frame three okay back to our content drawer blueprint and in here i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call this new folder notify underscore state okay so i'm going to open that folder and i'm going to create a new notify state right so right click blueprint i'm going to search for notify state and we're going to go down to the paper cd one and then select it ins underscore attack uh let's double click on it and open this blueprint and as you can see it looks a bit different to what we've been using and all we really care from this part is here where it says functions and we're going to tell it i want on begin and then on end okay so let me just add them to on begin and then on end okay and if i were to save it and then go back to my animation source and say right i'm on my walk and now i'm gonna go from two to four so i'm gonna go and right click here and can you see now it says unnotified state you can see now it says n a n s attack so you can see here it's appeared so what you can do with this is grab the ends and then just pull it to where you want it to be so now it's just these two you can right click and then tell it exactly how many frames it's gonna last so once we've done that we're gonna save it and then go back into my a n s attack and then we're gonna try to get some code working on here so we need a get paper character I'm just getting it back from the main okay and then I'm gonna cast it to my main uh, character the one that don't have any code done okay so cast to BP character and then lastly I'm gonna connect this Okay. we've cast it to our character now from here we're going to do one more thing so i'm going to pull out from my character i'm going to tell it to find hit box collision that function that we just created also over here i'm gonna connect it and then i'm gonna select it and i'm gonna copy it and paste it underneath and then we're only just going to connect this and then this to this so we have that main basic event so now the next thing that we need to do is write we need to tell it to be active here and then not to be active on the second one let's go into control browser hero and then find your a b p hero character and as you can see we have our animations here and everything else so let's go back in here and then here we need to think about right how am i going to add the damage to this and the solution is quite simple we're going to right click and add a jump and we can call this jump however we want so for me it's going to be damage underscore jump okay and this state so and i want this state to be called damage and then from this damage I'm gonna play uh, the animation so it will be pull play damage we go to flipbook look at my damage if you think about this it wouldn't be good if it actually looped it's only we only wanted to do it once when you're getting hit and then every time you hit it will just appear so we need to click on your damage animation then just click on do not loop and then compile and save so now that we have that I also want to figure out how is it going to receive damage so I need to go back to my BP character and we're going to have to create a new function okay so let's click on new function and let's say receive underscore damage okay 
Now that you have your received damage, let's just search for get random distance from paper CD, okay? Not this one, the one that says paper CD. And from here we're gonna pull uh, to a jump node, so jump to node. And also again, paper CD, important. And then we're gonna connect it. And then we're gonna say, right, what am I jumping to? So let me just go back to my AVP, go back one, and I'm gonna do damage jump one. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it right to where I want it to jump. Okay, and then I'm gonna save it and compile it. And I wanna create a new variable, okay? And I wanna call this variable function. Action. And we're gonna make this one an integer. So compile, it's gonna appear, and this function is gonna be zero. So, and in here, we're gonna go into our details here, and I'm gonna say function. And at the moment, can you see function says zero, but it does already zero on my character, so we need to make this one. And then compile and save. Also compile and save. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our component begin overlap. Remember the first thing we did on our enemy character? So I'm gonna want a branch. And then I'm gonna say, I also wanna receive my damage, right? So receive damage, which is here. This will go into my target, add a splitter here to make it a bit better, okay? One thing that we're not told is what function are they gonna be part of? So let's drag in here and say, let's type faction, and then we're gonna say, get faction, okay? And then we're also gonna go and pull and say, right, this is not equal. And we're gonna connect this to your condition. The moment we got target, faction, and I'm gonna pull from here, I'm gonna say, right, faction again, and we're gonna say, get faction. Okay, so it looks like that. I'm gonna add a splitter here just to make it tidier. Okay. So that's what our damage is gonna look like. So once it's done, we won't be able to play with an enemy yet since we not set it up. So one thing that we can do is if we go to our function, let's just make sure that we make this uh, edit instance editable so we can change it in within the editor. So let's just click on that. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to create a new variable to ensure that damage is being taken. So let's create a new variable. It's going to be a boolean. And this is going to be, all right, there we go. Uh, is, it, is it taking damage? So is underscore damage. So that's the question we're asking, okay? So from here, we're gonna go and create a new function. So let's go and create a new function. And let's call this no underscore damage. And we're gonna pull, and we're just gonna ask if uh, set is damage. And that's all we need to do. So save it and compile it. And now we're gonna go into our receive damage and we're gonna expand on this. From here, I wanna get a timer event, okay? So let's pull this and we're gonna say set timer by event. And now we need to create a time variable for this to work because at the moment we don't have one. So let's create a variable. And let's call this one time. Let's create a float. Compile it. Let's create a time of 4.5 maybe. What we wanted to do is we want to create an event that's going to allow us to say, right, it's not going to be any damage and this how long is it going to last, okay? So, so as we create our time variable, I'm also going to create a create event and I'm going to connect this event to the event. I'm going to bring my time I'll say get time, I'm gonna put it to my time. And the function that I wanna use is uh, no damage. So we can just say no damage. So we know no damage is gonna happen. So one thing that we've not done is we need to make sure that 
we ask that question. So let's set is damage in between receiving damage and your jump node. So let's connect that really quickly. I'm going to tell it when it does take damage, then this is what's going to happen. Okay. So let's save it and compile it. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to our ABP hero. We're going to connect our damage to our idle. And if we open this really quickly, easier. So we're going to get our BP hero and I'm going to search for this damage and I'm going to click get. So we're asking, am I getting damage? So we're saying it's not equal to, so boolean not. And then we're going to connect it. And that should be saying, right, this is not going to work when you're not getting damage. Okay, so I'm going to get my blueprint character. I'm going to search for faction. I'm going to make it one. I'm going to make sure that it's at the same level as this. So minus 140. And then the same will be here, minus 140. And then this is 180. So let's see if we can get it to work. So I'm going to play on it. Okay, so we made a little error. So we put this on begin overlap on our enemy and we want to put it on the BP character. So what we can do is just select it all and then press Control X. And then we're going to compile and save it. On the BP character, we're going to Control V and it's going to paste here. Okay, and that should work. Another thing that I forgot to do is it's not going to recognize the collision until we tell it to. So on the event begin play, just search for hitbox collision. And that should set off the collision. Find your uh, hero and bring your blueprint in. Mine is minus 140 on Ys and then 180. So one thing that I think I forgot to do is tell it what faction to be part of. So let's click on faction. Let's click on one saying that it's an enemy. I'm going to save it and play it. When you attack, it's doing your damage. Well done.